So in this video, I wanna talk about five things that I would do differently this time around if I had to teach myself how to code and do it all over again. Given what I know now after going through it and becoming a self-taught programmer and working as a web developer for the last three years, I was really curious, like, all right, what, what are some of the things that I did wrong and what should I do differently if I did have to do it all over again to kind of help some of the viewers out there who are going through it for the first time? And we'll start with number one. The first thing I would do differently is I would just go straight to project-based learning and start writing code right away. I watched a lot of videos and I followed along with a lot of tutorials when I first started learning. I feel that if I would have followed something that was more project-based, even if it would have been a tutorial that had me build a project from beginning to end, or something like Free Code Camp or the Odin Project or anything that's project-based learning, would have been so much more beneficial for me to just go at that right away rather than just watching a bunch of videos and jumping around between different things and not really knowing what to do. And I really wish I would have just started writing code right from the beginning and started building projects right from the beginning. And following along with the tutorial that has you build a project as you're learning is gonna be way better than just learning a bunch of random coding knowledge and programming concepts that aren't really gonna make sense to you early on. So just jump into something that's project-based learning, your tutorial, make sure that it has you building something. If you want, check out Free Code Camp, check out the Odin Project, just Google project-based learning for the programming language that you're trying to learn, and I guarantee you that you'll find something out there. But I highly recommend making sure that you're doing project-based learning and you're writing code as soon as you can. All right, the second thing, and this is more of a personal thing for me because this is kind of what I did when I was learning, was I would focus more on actual programming, whether it be front end or back end or full stack programming than UI and UX development. And again, this is a personal thing because I felt that I spent a lot of time learning UI development. I spent a lot of time in HTML and CSS. And while that did help me get my first job, it kind of set me up to be a UI developer early in my career and since I kind of kept following that path, I'm starting to see that I really don't enjoy that stuff as much. I really just did it because I felt like it was the easiest thing for me to learn and the quickest way for me to get a job. And while those two things were true, I always felt like I wasn't a real programmer because most of the stuff that I did was HTML and CSS. And now after three years, I'm finally becoming a full stack developer. And I'm not trying to down talk anyone who's focusing on that stuff because like I said, I did focus on that and this is just a personal thing for me. I just wouldn't focus on UI so much and HTML and CSS so much. I would focus more on actual programming and understanding how applications are put together. The third thing on this list of things I would do differently if I had to learn how to code all over again would be to focus on getting job ready sooner than later. I waited a long time before I started applying for jobs because I just didn't feel ready. And the truth is, looking back now, I was probably ready way before I started applying for jobs. I just didn't know it. And even though I was networking at the time and I was around other developers, I never felt confident enough in my skills to go out and start looking for work until way later into my learning when people were basically telling me like, dude, why are you not looking for work already? You're, you're ready. And it took other people telling me that I was ready for me to start applying. Probably could have got hired a lot sooner, maybe a month or two sooner, but that still would have been a lot sooner and it would have helped me out and I wouldn't have had to spend so much more extra time learning on my own and I could have been getting paid to learn at my new job. But, you know, everything did work out for me and I ended up getting a job and you will too if you stick with this and you build your portfolio and you build your projects and you get your resume together and you get out there and put yourself out there and start applying sooner than later. Trust me, this is one big thing that I always look back and say, why did I wait so long to start applying for jobs? All right, so number four on my list is gonna be, I really wish that I would have toughed it out and learned my data structures and algorithms. They were very difficult for me. It made me feel very dumb. I would get imposter syndrome every time I would get stuck on one. And they made me feel like I would never be able to accomplish becoming a self-taught programmer. And the truth is, they're just something that you learn. And even though I'm not very strong at data structures and algorithms. I know way more now than I did when I was learning how to code, but I wish that I would have focused on them 
when I was learning how to code and I and I would have just stuck with them and toughed it out and spent a month or two just focusing on learning data structures and algorithms the right way. And I have a video where I talk about not needing algorithms to be a web developer. And while that may be a little bit true, I really wish that I would have focused on them because I think that they would have helped me learn a lot and they would have gave me more confidence in my interviewing and they would have just made me a better developer from the start if I would have just struggled through them and learned them early on. So if I had to learn how to code all over again, I would definitely learn my data structures and algorithms. All right, the last thing on my list, and this one's a little difficult to do now because the current circumstances of everything that's going on, but I wish I would have started networking from the very first day that I decided that I was gonna learn how to code and try to get a job as a developer. I didn't go to my first meetup until I had been learning how to code for almost four months, maybe even longer than that. I don't remember the time frame exactly, but I know I had been learning and teaching myself how to code for a while before I went to any meetup or showed anyone my code or talked to any other developers. And I'm lucky that I made it that long without giving up because the encouragement and inspiration and motivation that I got from going to a meetup and meeting other developers that were either self-taught or went to college for it and were professional engineers who did this for a living, you know, they all gave me encouraging words and they all helped me and they and I even got an opportunity to apply for a job at my first meetup. I didn't get the job because I wasn't ready and I, I couldn't pass the coding challenge that they gave me. But nonetheless, there was so much opportunity in the meetups. And the reason I didn't go and network with people early on, a lot of imposter syndrome. I felt like I didn't belong going to a meetup because I wasn't a real developer. So why would anyone even want me there? You know, what could I contribute? And and I was so wrong and I wish I would have known that. I really regret waiting so long to go to my first meetup and start networking. And as soon as I did, I was at like every single meetup that was available that popped up in my area for software development, web development. You know, I went to, to every meetup that would benefit me in learning and help me grow as a developer when I was self-taught on my own. You know, having people to talk to is really cool. All right, I felt like that wasn't as quick as I wanted this video to be. If you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a like. It'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want, check out some of my other content on, you know, inspiration and tips on learning how to code and becoming a self-taught programmer. Thanks, and I'll see you around.